Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to cover the three types of muscle tissue which includes skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle tissue. First, let's talk about skeletal muscle tissue. Skeletal muscles most commonly attach to bones and they help you move your body. Unlike the other two types of muscle tissue, skeletal muscles contract on a voluntary basis via the somatic nervous system allowing you to move your body at will. Skeletal muscles also serve important functions such as supporting your posture, protecting delicate organs, and they even produce heat during contraction which helps the body maintain a proper temperature. Each skeletal muscle is considered an organ and it's made up of connective tissue layers, muscle fibers, blood vessels, and nerves. Skeletal muscles attach to the bones through tendons or through a direct attachment. Now as we look at this muscle diagram, you'll notice an outer layer of connective tissue covering the muscle called epimysium. The prefix epi means upon or over. Just think of the epidermis, which is the topmost layer upon your skin. And mysium comes from a Greek word that simply means muscle. Therefore, epimysium is that layer of connective tissue that is over or upon the entire muscle organ. Next, you'll notice that the muscle fibers are going to be bunched together into something called fascicles, which means bundles. And these fascicles are going to be surrounded by connective tissue called paramysium. Peri means around, and again, mysium refers to the muscle. So the paramysium is around the fascicles that bundle up these individual muscle fibers. Now inside these fascicles, you will find another connective tissue layer called the endomysium. And this surrounds the individual muscle cells inside those fascicles. And endo just simply means within. So that will help you to remember that it surrounds the individual muscle fibers within the fascicle. Now let's take a look at some of the individual muscle cells which are called muscle fibers. These fibers are long and cylindrical and they contain several nuclei which are located around the peripheral portion of the cell. Now these muscle fibers are going to be wrapped in a cell membrane called the sarcolemma. Inside each muscle fiber there are tiny rods called myofibrils which are surrounded by sarcoplasm. These myofibrils, also called fibrils, consist of repeating segments called sarcomeres, which are the tiny units responsible for skeletal muscle contraction. As we take a closer look at the structure of a sarcomere, you'll notice these zigzag sections that mark the endpoint of each sarcomere. These are called Z-discs or Z-lines and they allow for the attachment of the thin actin filaments as well as an elastic protein called titan. Each sarcomere contains thin actin filaments and thick myosin filaments. The thin actin filaments, represented here in blue, anchor to the Z-disc. The thick myosin filaments, represented here in red, attach to an elastic springy protein called titan which then attaches to the Z-disc as well. The actin and myosin filaments engage during muscle contraction, which I'll discuss in just a moment. The M-lines or M-bands anchor to the center of the myosin filaments, holding them together while acting as a shock absorber. To help us understand the parts of the sarcomere, anatomists divide the sections into bands or zones. The arrangement of filaments within these bands accounts for the striated or striped appearance of the skeletal muscle fibers. And that's an important characteristic about skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue that you're going to want to remember. They both contain striations. First, there is an A band on each sarcomere, which is a section that contains the entire length of the thick myosin filaments along with an overlapping portion of the thin actin filaments. This section makes up the dark part of the striation pattern. There's also an I-band, which is the section of the sarcomere that surrounds the Z-disc and contains only thin actin filaments. And this section makes up the lighter band in the striation pattern. The H-zone is the section within the A-band that consists of the thick myosin filaments and its embedded M-lines. There are no thin filaments in this section of the sarcomere when it's relaxed. 
And again, the Z-disc is going to be that zigzag portion that marks the end of each sarcomere and allows for the attachment of the actin filaments and titan. During muscle contraction, thick myosin filaments located within the sarcomere bend and the knobby head part attaches to the thin actin filaments and slides them toward the middle of the sarcomere. This sliding of filaments causes the sarcomere to shorten or contract. As this takes place all along the sarcomeres within that myofibril, the entire muscle fiber contracts, which causes the entire muscle organ to shorten or contract. Now let's talk a little bit about cardiac muscle tissue. Now out of all the three types of muscle tissue found in the body, I have to admit, cardiac muscle tissue is the one that's near and dear to my heart because, well, it's in my heart. In fact, that is the only place you will ever find cardiac muscle tissue, and the very word cardiac literally means relating to the heart. The cells that make up cardiac muscle are called cardiomyocytes or cardiocytes, and together they make up the myocardium, which is the muscle layer of the heart. This muscle layer causes the heart to contract in a ringing motion, which pumps blood throughout the body, supplying organs and tissues with oxygen and vital nutrients. Now, cardiac muscle tissue shares some similarities to skeletal muscle tissue, but there are also some key differences. First, let's talk about some of the similarities. Like skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle cells are surrounded and separated by a connective tissue layer called endomysium. Remember, endo means within, and mysium means muscle. So this is the connective tissue closest to those actual muscle cells or fibers. Cardiac muscle also contains myofibrils and sarcomeres, which not only enable contraction, but they also create these striations or striped pattern that characterize both cardiac and skeletal muscle tissue. And that's something you'll want to remember. Both skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue have striations or stripes. As I pointed out in my skeletal muscle video, sarcomeres contain actin and myosin filaments that slide during contraction, and the specific arrangement of these filaments into zones and bands creates that striped or striated appearance. So those are some of the similarities between these two muscle types, but even though they do have those similarities, there are also differences between them. Whereas skeletal muscle contracts on a voluntary basis, which is when you consciously want it to contract, cardiac muscle contracts on an involuntary basis without your conscious control via the autonomic nervous system. And that's actually a good thing if you think about it because if we actually had to think and remember to make our hearts pump, most of the population would probably be dead by now. There's also a difference in the shape between skeletal and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle tissue develops into long cylindrical fibers, but cardiac muscle tissue is formed into single cells that have an irregular branched appearance. These individual cells join to other cardiac cells via intercalated discs, which I'll discuss in a moment. Another difference is that skeletal muscle contains multiple nuclei that are scattered around the peripheral portion of the muscle cells, whereas cardiac muscle contains only one or two nuclei which are located near the center of the cell. Finally, an important characteristic of cardiac muscle cells that you'll want to remember is that they are joined together by something called intercalated discs, which are absent in skeletal muscle tissue. These intercalated discs form an interlocking zigzag connection between the individual cardiac muscle cells, and they consist of three types of cell junctions, desmosomes, fasciae adherens, and gap junctions. Desmosomes act as binders during contraction, supporting the filaments in adjoining cardiac cells to prevent separation. Fasciae adherens also work to connect and bind cardiac muscle cells by adhering to the actin filaments. And the gap junctions are the tiny channels between adjoining cardiac cells that allow for the rapid passage of ions from one cell to the next, resulting in depolarization and contraction, which causes cardiac muscle cells to contract simultaneously. So in a sense, these gap junctions act as a bridge, allowing a quick passage of electrical signals that's gonna allow the heart to contract and pump in unison. And inside the heart, you also have specialized cells called pacemaker cells, and these actually connect to these gap junctions 
and the pacemaker cells work to control the heart rate. And finally, let's talk a little bit about the third and final type of muscle tissue, which is called smooth muscle tissue. Now, smooth muscle is quite a bit different than those other two muscle types. However, it also shares some similarities. So I'm gonna tell you some of the key concepts you need to know about smooth muscle tissue. First, let's talk about smooth muscle location. Whereas cardiac muscle is only located in the heart and skeletal muscles mostly attached to bones, Smooth muscle tissue is found throughout the body. And to remember the main locations, I created a simple mnemonic to help you. Just remember the word stove. S stands for skin, specifically those erector pili muscles that cause goosebumps. T stands for tracts found in the reproductive, respiratory, and urinary systems. O stands for organs that are hollow, such as the intestines, the bladder, the uterus, stomach, and so on. V stands for vessels, and smooth muscle is going to help those blood vessels constrict. And then E stands for eyes, and specifically smooth muscle is going to help iris contraction as well as movement of the lens. Now, as we take a look at the shape of smooth muscle, you'll notice that it has a shape that's referred to as fusiform, which resembles a football or a spindle shape. And this is different from cardiac muscle tissue, which develops into that irregular branched pattern, or skeletal muscle tissue, which consists of fibers that are very long and cylindrical. However, like skeletal and cardiac muscle, you'll find that smooth muscle is also surrounded and separated by a connective tissue called endomysium. Now, one key difference with smooth muscle cells is that they are only going to have one nucleus, which is located in the central portion of the cell. So that single nucleus and smooth muscle cells be like, all by myself, don't wanna be. In contrast, skeletal muscle tissue has multiple nuclei around the peripheral portion, whereas cardiac muscle usually has one or maybe two nuclei, which are also centrally located. Now let's talk a little bit about the layers of smooth muscle because it will often develop in layers within an organ to help that organ move in different ways so it can perform its job. For example, in most of the digestive system, smooth muscle cells are formed into two layers with different orientations which work together to propel food down the digestive tract, a process known as peristalsis. You have a longitudinal layer and this word starts with long, and that will help you to remember that these cells run along the whole length in a long way of the organ as the outermost smooth muscle layer, helping it become shorter during contraction. And then there is a circular layer, which is deep to that longitudinal layer and runs in a perpendicular direction to it. And this is going to form around the organ circumference in a circular direction, hence the word circular. And this is going to narrow or constrict the organ during contraction. Now the stomach is unique in that it actually has a third layer of smooth muscle, which is called an oblique layer. And this helps to further break down food before it reaches the intestines. Now, just like cardiac muscle tissue, smooth muscle tissue is controlled involuntarily via the autonomic nervous system. And that means you don't actually consciously control when your smooth muscle is going to contract. And remember, skeletal muscle is the only muscle tissue type of the three that you can actually control voluntarily. Now, as we take a look at the structure of smooth muscle tissue, you'll notice that it has a different structure. Smooth muscle does not contain sarcomeres, the organized contractile units that are found in both cardiac and skeletal muscle tissue, nor does it contain myofibrils, which are those rod-like structures made up of the repeating segments of sarcomeres. Because smooth muscle lacks both of those things, myofibrils and sarcomeres, it does not contain the striations or that striped pattern that characterizes both skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue. And that is an important point to remember for exams. Smooth muscle is the only muscle tissue type that does not contain striations or those stripes, and that's why it's actually called smooth. However, smooth muscle tissue does consist of the same thin actin filaments and the thick myosin filaments found in both skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue, which work to contract the muscle fiber via a sliding filament mechanism. 
and these are just kind of dispersed throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. Now as you look at this illustration of a smooth muscle fiber, you'll notice the single nucleus in the center and there is a net-like structure running throughout this muscle fiber. And these little dots that you see here on this net structure, these are called dense bodies. And the dense bodies attach to the sarcolemma, which is the smooth muscle cell's outer sheath. And they work much like the Z-discs in the sarcomere, and these are going to allow the thin filaments to attach to them. The dense bodies also allow for the attachment of these intermediate filaments, such as desmin and vomentum, which run throughout the cell in a networked fashion, adding both strength and stability to it. Now let me give you a quick overview of how smooth muscle contracts because it's going to use the slotting filament mechanism which is similar to that of skeletal and cardiac muscle. During contraction, calcium ions initiate a reaction that causes the phosphorylation of myosin, causing those heads on the myosin filaments to rise up and bind to the actin filaments, pulling them forward in the process. Now as those myosin filament heads slide the actin filaments forward, they're going to also pull on those dense bodies to which the actin filaments attach, which then pulls on that network of those intermediate filaments running throughout the cell. Thus, the entire smooth muscle fiber contracts or shortens. Now, it's important to note that there are actually two subtypes of smooth muscle tissue. You have single unit and multi-unit smooth muscle. And the single versus multi prefix there is primarily referring to the number of nerve fibers required to activate the smooth muscle tissue. In single unit smooth muscle, also called unitary smooth muscle, it's only going to be innervated by maybe one or very few nerve fibers per bundle. And there's no need to have many nerve fibers because one nerve fiber can actually contract an entire sheet of smooth muscle in unison due to the presence of gap junctions, which allow the electrical signal to spread rapidly to all of the adjoining smooth muscle cells. And if you think of like a string of Christmas lights, for example, that would be an example of a single unit smooth muscle because you only have to have one plug, a single plug on the Christmas lights, but when you plug it in, the way those Christmas lights are constructed, the electrical signal rapidly passes to all those little individual lights and they come on. So that would be an example of single unit smooth muscle. And this type of smooth muscle is primarily found in the hollow organ, such as the intestines, which is why it's also sometimes called visceral smooth muscle. And of course, viscera refers to your organs or guts. Now, multi-unit smooth muscle, however, these smooth muscle cells are going to contain fewer gap junctions. So the electrical impulse is not going to be able to spread across all the cells as efficiently as the single unit smooth muscle. So each cell is going to require its own electrical impulse. Hence, there are going to be multiple nerve fibers found here to deliver that impulse. So whereas a string of Christmas lights is going to be analogous to a single unit smooth muscle, the multi-unit smooth muscle would be like five individual lamps that you have to plug in to get their own power. And this type of smooth muscle is going to be found more in the skin, the eyes, the blood vessels, and so on. Okay, that wraps up this video over the three types of muscle tissue. Hope that helped you out. We have a free quiz that you can take on our website by clicking the link in the description below. In addition, we have a whole playlist of anatomy videos that you might find helpful, so you might want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.